Hello everyone, in today's video uh, we're going to be operating the Blerio 9. Now this is an interesting little payo aircraft, uh, it's available on the Microsoft Store. Uh, the aircraft of course, if you go back in time a few years, you realize this is one of the first aircraft ever used to cross the English Channel. It is a French design, it is a version 9, in particular one has lucky number 7 on the back of it. And as you can tell just by looking at it, this is uh, not what I would consider a typical aircraft, especially when you compare it to the ones near us. Uh, we're sitting here in a lovely ocean city, uh, this is in uh, Maryland, it's right on the coast. Uh, we're basically sharing a border with Delaware there. The goal here, of course, to get this thing airborne, fly along the coast just a teeny tiny bit, take a look at some of the sights, and uh, come swing back. Uh, of course, being this particular aircraft, we're using the RIP edition, which is uh, basically their way of saying you probably shouldn't be flying this thing. It's a little dangerous. Um, realistically, I've gotten some experience with this. It's absolutely a blast in VR because it's literally like, you know, something you would make in Gary's Mod with, you know, like a bathtub and a couple fins kind of a thing. But that being said, it's kind of a neat airplane, and I absolutely love the fact it uses bicycle tires to actually get us going around here. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. So uh, first things first, when I usually do these, I'll make some comments, you know, you've got one of these, and you got to click this switch, and you got to turn the battery on, but um, yeah, we don't do any of that. If you actually take a look, there is zero instrumentation. Again, I'm using the RIP edition, which I think is the author's kind of funny way to make it sound like this thing's impossible to fly. I will admit, it is definitely challenging to fly. I don't consider it impossible. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come over here to our oil pressure gauge. What? Yeah, this is our oil pressure gauge, and we actually want to swing that to the off position. We want to build up a little tiny bit of oil pressure, and then we'll release it after we get started. Uh, the next step, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take our head and float downwards here, floating down the stream. Come on down here, and you're going to see this little switch at the bottom. This is your main fuel valve. Yeah, this box is your fuel tank. Yeah, kind of scary if you ask me. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure the magneto is in the on position. This is off. This is on. Interesting fact, you can turn this on and off in flight if you need to, like, you know, kind of reduce things or things like that. Uh, these two handles right here are very unique. Of course, this is our throttle, which we're all pretty familiar with. You'll notice it's a good old-fashioned mechanical connection that actually pulls a wire inside the throttle itself. Uh, back in the old days, based on what the documentation for this aircraft suggested, that using the throttle was only half of how you controlled the engine. The other half was using the fuel. Again, we're using the RIP 25 horsepower edition here, so it doesn't surprise me. Next lever we have up top is actually the decompression lever. If you pull this, you actually can basically not unseat the valves, but you can basically let anything inside of them out. And that's a quick and easy way to actually shut the engine. Now, where you can have a lot of fun with this is you can crank the throttle up and pull this back to kind of kill it while leaving the throttle open. Seems kind of sketchy, but again, that's not too bad. So here's our fuel tank, and over here is our oil tank behind us. Uh, <laughs> not much of anything. Look at how tiny this rudder is. Ugh. Boy, this is going to be fun. By the way, we have no ailerons. Uh, we twist the wing instead if we want to get it to move using that pulley system that's above our head. Yeah, this is going to be a fun flight today for sure. Okay, with everything else established, we're going to take our throttle and put it to the 50% position. We're going to reach and we're going to grab the pedal and uh, wham! Now, um, as you can probably hear by the incredible amount of pop, 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 pop. Whoa, we're taking off here. Uh, we're already uh, starting to accelerate here. Go ahead and stop me real quick. There we go, real quick. Nice. So uh, basically, this aircraft has no ground handling. So, uh, you, oh, <laughs> the engine shut off. So uh, the thing I forgot to do is open up the oil pressure back after getting this thing started. Come on. Come on. All right, let's go ahead and open it up now that it fills up with pressure. You can actually adjust the oil pressure by dynamically tweaking that knob. Now, now that we're rolling, which we shouldn't be rolling, stop. Uh, we want to go ahead and now keep the throttle just far enough to get this thing staying basically where it needs to go. Don't let the engine die on you, though. You're going to have to kind of play a delicate game of just enough throttle to keep it going, but not so much throttle that it starts to run away on you. Remember, this aircraft right now weighs 647 pounds. That's it. So there's really not a lot here. The ultralights, like this one over here, is almost not quite twice as heavy as the aircraft we're in right now. So keep in mind, even though we only have 25 horsepower, and if you actually take a look at the front, again, going back to my comment about Gary's mod here, I mean, look at this thing. Little teeny tiny W engine. Okay, now that we're here, according to the manual, uh, we're supposed to use ground crew to move us around, but unfortunately, I've got no ground crew, and don't even think like you can go ahead and use this uh, terrible rudder here. There is no tailwheel steering here. Look at the wires. Ah, oh, such a good detail. So instead, what we do is um, the manual recommends using slow. So to get to slow, you press the Y key, and it switches you to this weird mode where you can now press the arrow keys on your numpad to go ahead and drive the aircraft around. I'm pressing 1 and 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point in the direction I need to go to taxi, press W, and now I'm just going to kind of taxi over there. Again, this aircraft engine will shut off on you if you let your throttle get down to about 10% or so. Once this thing gets rolling, don't be afraid to kind of suddenly like pause. Again, no brakes, no brakes, no brakes. Oh, my engine's dying. I'm going to press Y again. We're going to slew this thing around some more. And that looks pretty good right there. Okay, let's get this thing rolling again. Remember, no brakes. Now, what I was reading in the manual, which I thought was very interesting with this aircraft also, is that 
other than having a top speed of 44 miles in an hour, it also had a tendency, if you had a wind stronger than four knots, to basically become useless. Unfortunately, we have a six knot wind today, and it's also going to be a crosswind, which is going to make this takeoff really, really fun. I can't wait. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off to this thing's natural takeoff surface, which of course is that glorious grass, which is right ahead of us. I'm just going to keep on cruising until I get there. I'm going to switch back to slow mode. I'm going to go ahead and rotate myself once I get to the L line. Whoop! Thanks, ground crew. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Greg. Those guys are great. Man, I wish I had full service like that at every airport. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to gently taxi back here. Again, uh, you can use your rudder pedals. Again, look at that. It's just a piece of wood as much as you want here, and it's not going to do anything for you. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back just a little bit again. Don't pull it back all the way. Otherwise, you're going to have to reach up there and start the propeller. But at the same time as when you're on the grow, oh, here we go. Sorry. I'm already having to work my feet fairly aggressively to keep me on the center line. Again, this is bicycle tires, nothing too, too crazy here. All right, gonna line ourselves up here. It's interesting thing is uh, the first American Air Aviator in the female category. That sounds a little weird when I say it, I apologize. That was Harriet Quimby, who was actually operated this aircraft, which I thought was pretty wild. Um, at the museum that I used to work for, we actually had a Blaria, which I thought was pretty cool. And that's the only reason I remotely know how to pronounce it for once. So we're going to go ahead and taxi ourselves out of the grass. You don't have to take off from the grass. This, in my mind, it just seems to be a more traditional method. All right, thanks, ground crew. You guys have been wonderfully helpful. Okay, we're ready for takeoff. Now, for this aircraft, there's no magical run-up or anything like, oh, oh, I just lost my engine again. <coughs> Excuse me for a second. Ugh. Thank you. That's going to happen to you about 100 times. Don't sweat it too much. Don't accidentally pull this handle in flight, by the way. It's very embarrassing. Okay, so the ground crew are holding me. By the way, if you need to set the chocks, you can actually press the brake, as in the little parking brake, and what it will get, do is actually engage a couple chocks on the wheels themselves. That'll actually help stop you. That only works if you already stop, though. Uh, the other thing you can do, too, by the way, is if you kind of float down here, you can actually get my lost my engine again. You can actually click and actually set the wheel chocks. All right, start her up again. Come on. Thank you. And now if we need to remove the wheel chocks, we can just come down here and left click to pop them off. All right, let's take off. So taking off in this thing is uh, different. I'm going to go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward. Oh, yeah, listen to that anger. Something about back, 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 back fire. Again, no exhaust. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push the nose forward just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and use our right foot to keep us from jumping off the runway. Remember, we have a crosswind. Once we get a little faster, the aircraft is just going to go whoop and disappear into the air. And now we are airborne with this uh, piece of ancient technology. It's just amazing to think that they use these as reconnaissance planes back in World War I. Now, what makes that even cooler is the fact that this particular aircraft was used with two people in the aircraft as a reconnaissance aircraft. Keep in mind, they had the 50 horsepower or even the 100 horsepower variant. Um, we have 25 horses, and I don't even know if I'm getting all 25. Um, from what they said in the manual, uh, you can feel free to abuse the throttle as much as you can other than pulling it back too far. Otherwise, you're going to have to reach up there and restart this thing in the air. You can see that I'm running about 31 knots or so 32 knots i think is about as fast as this can go now what you're going to start noticing is as you start getting higher and the winds start getting stronger you're going to get really really bad yaw coupling you know you're going to be going no not that's not yaw coupling that, that that's a farm dance but a yaw coupling which is what's going to happen is you're going to start dipping one wing and then you're going to try to compensate with your feet which is going to cause the other wing to dip down so you're going to have to kind of keep your altitude low to avoid those gusty winds which makes work for yourself all right Turning this thing is a process. If you see if I uh, crank on it as hard as I can, it actually does turn reliably. But more importantly, when I start getting this thing turning, I start skidding the aircraft. The moment this aircraft starts to skid, you're going to find yourself constantly battling with your feet. So what I actually recommend doing is going and using just a little tiny rudder in the direction you want to turn and a little bit of aileron. And as soon as it starts going in the direction you want it to go, gently go ahead and nudge it back where you need to put it. So you're going to see it's going to get this weird little whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a technical term, by the way. Once you're done the turn, you're going to have to quickly catch it with your feet so the aircraft doesn't start, like I said, yaw coupling on you. Now, one strategy I found that works really well with this aircraft is see this triangle that you got right here? If you were to leave your mouse right in the center of the triangle, that's basically level. So you can see if I park my mouse right there, I'm more or less pointing at that red and blue building that's right up there on the coast off the boardwalk. And you can see as I'm flying here, that distinctive yaw coupling, I like that yaw coupling, that's actually pretty funny. Um, you can actually see that that starts to catch, so you have to be very quick with your feet. Remember, the rudder on this thing, let me jump to the back, you can see how much work I'm doing on that rudder, it's very, very, very small. Also, when you use full throttle with this aircraft, it has a very, very strong tendency to actually start climbing upwards. So you'll actually notice I have to point the nose of the plane down to maintain forward airspeed, even though I'm at full throttle. Again, 25 horsepower, this thing has as much power as a Model T. That's not saying much. 
such. All right, let's go ahead and swing down to the boardwalk here. I want to see just how bad the traffic is. I mean, it's April, so we're just starting to get those folks start coming down here right away. Right over here, of course, uh, you got coming up on the Assateague Bay, which is over there on your left. There is an amazing reversal of current that comes through that little gap, which you see right there. I'm looking at it right now. Zoom in. That actually changes direction based on the tide and, of course, time of day. But the most amazing thing is you'll get a million seagulls that'll park here trying to beat the current. They float out to sea, leave the light, jump up, come and land, go back again, take off, land, take off, land, take off, land, and basically sit there and do that until they finally tire out and they go find somewhere else to hang out. It's the weirdest thing. But anyway, let's continue uh, flying our aircraft here. I'm currently at full throttle. Uh, for those of you who are worried about that, you can just back the throttle back just a tiny bit. I would not back it back too far. If you feel the aircraft start coming out from underneath you where it starts doing that kind of whoa, that left and right, almost that figure eight motion, that's a your sign that you're probably getting very close to a stall so you want to be very very mindful of that all right let's go ahead and uh, head ourselves over here this is uh, normally there would be a gigantic uh, amusement park right there you can't quite make out that's where it would be with the huge ferris wheel which of course is very iconic to uh, ocean city again ocean city maryland there are other ocean cities i know by the way there is no pitch trim there's no aileron trim on this aircraft and right now my feet are basically working full time in order to keep this thing somewhat stable in the air here all right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a left turn here and see how many people on the beach today. It doesn't look bad. I mean, again, when we turn, you want to go ahead and use a little bit of aileron and a little bit of rudder. As soon as you feel it start to turn, you've got to basically back the turn out before it starts getting away from you. Otherwise, the whole aircraft, I kid you not, will go brrrt and spin right from underneath you. This is the RIP edition of this aircraft, after all. All right, the other version, by the way, the one that has 50 horsepower, it's not bad. You won't have too much difficulty with it. All right, again, I'm using that triangle shape in the front of my aircraft. Remember, at full throttle, you have to tip the triangle down in order to keep it the same altitude. If you're at less than full throttle, you actually have to bring it up. But again, that's going to bring us that weird yaw coupling. All right, it looks like the uh, hotels are pretty quiet this time of year. I'm actually a little disappointed in the traffic here. One of the fun things with Ocean City, too, is there's actually a bunch of stoplights and all synchronized with each other. So if uh, you're one of those people and you try to uh, basically race through, if you get one of them, you end up getting like 30 of them in a row. It's actually pretty cool. All right, we're definitely getting a bit of a crosswind here, and this, this aircraft likes to weather vane. The faster you travel, the less the weather vaning will get you. And again, once that aircraft starts doing that wandering back and forth, it means you're not going fast enough. You can see here I'm more or less level, even though my triangle, as you can see right out the front there, is pretty much straight down. I love the fact I can see the ground below me, and also the fact that I'm basically getting tons of wind in my face right now. I'm all set full throttle in case you were curious. All right, I'm going to proceed along the uh, boardwalk here. I think I'm um, around, around 6th or 7th Street here. Not, pfft, not that we can see out the side. Oh, don't spend too much time looking out the way there. All right, okay, cool. All right, we're just going to swing up here, and then we'll kind of take Main Street back. We'll go ahead and cross the Assateague and kind of head back that way as well. All right, just swing. And again, this thing is running pretty smoothly. Once you get up to speed, it is polite. Uh, the, one of the key elements, like I said, is you've got to keep your altitude. If you uh, try to get this thing uh, nice and too high, you're going to have issues. If you try going too slow, you're going to have issues. If you can keep it moving, you can keep it where the air is nice and dense. You're going to have a much, much, much easier time flying this aircraft. All right, let's go ahead and head this way. I'm going to go ahead and take a left. Go ahead right for the mini golf, which is uh, going to be coming across the front of the triangle in just a minute there. Again, I'm using a little bit of left foot. And I'm using a tiny bit of left aileron. You just need to get it generally going in the direction. Because otherwise, see how it's starting to pull itself to the right there? I'm not touching my controls. It's starting to build that gentle little wobble. The only way you're going to beat that wobble is by getting your speed back up and eliminating it. So I'm just going to quickly give it a quick little kick. And again, you can beat it. Uh, one technique you don't want to do is try to move with the wobble. You know, some aircraft uh, that you probably operated that have that issue, especially like a 727 or something with the old ones before the yaw dampers, you have a very strong tendency to go, whoa, whoa, just like we did. You can always jam the control in the direction of the wobble to kind of knock the wobble out. If you try to do that with this aircraft, you're basically going to do one of these things. And as soon as it snaps out, you're going to find yourself basically dropping a wing, which again, 25 horsepower means we don't really have the ability to get ourselves out of that big, nasty mess that we put ourselves into. So again, take your time. I think the most bank angle I've ever put on this thing is maybe 15, 20 degrees. I mean, you've seen pretty much the limit of it. All right, let's start canceling out our turn nice and early here. So go ahead and use a little bit of right foot and use a lot of aileron and just gently fly to the turn and try to get as much air over those wings as smoothly and coordinated as you can get it. If that thing starts to wobble on you, don't just sit there and let it get out of control because you're going to end up having to fight it. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to point my triangle right down there. 
Very, very interesting thing. Uh, the island that you see right off my little nose there, um, basically there is no easy way to get to it unless you have a boat. A uh, neat thing is there's a bunch of wild horses on it, and that's actually going to be our ultimate destination today is that what we're going to be landing on. Now, the reason I chose this nice soft beach as opposed to a nice hard tarmac is that the first six or seven times you try to land this aircraft, you're probably going to become one with the ground, not in a good way. Remember, we have bicycle tires on this thing. This is not fancy landing gear. We actually do have springs, by the way, and by springs, I really mean bungee cords. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah. These little tubes right here are your springs. So uh, keep that in mind that you don't have a lot of damping when you land too. All right, let's bring this thing down. So uh, when you're gonna descend with this aircraft, the technique is pretty straightforward. Go ahead and pull the throttle about halfway back. Um, you don't want to go ahead and pull it all the way back, otherwise the engine will shut off on you. Uh, pro tip, if your engine does shut off on you, uh, there's nothing in the universe stopping you from just reaching up here, grabbing the propeller and pulling it again. In the real plane, I'm sure actual pilots have had to do that in flight because these things were not the most reliable. So what you're gonna do is you're basically just gonna gently float down Again, use that triangle as your friend here. So if you point your triangle where you want to go and back the throttle out just enough and it starts floating downwards towards the target, you probably pull the throttle back enough. Watch out for that weird little wandering of the tail though. Remember, you don't have a very big rudder in this thing. You're basically flying a helicopter without a tail. That's what this thing handles like. So what we're going to do is we're going to set down right on the beach there. I'll keep in mind, we do have a crosswind. The wind is coming from that direction, which means once we do hit the ground, remember no brakes, this aircraft has kind of a very, very strong tendency to pull to the right. So one of the strategies we can do to avoid that, of course, is to go ahead and kind of nudge ourselves a little bit to the left when we land. But if you spin this thing around, it's going to come apart because, again, it's made of wood. This is not aluminum stressed or anything like that. It is lightweight. I got to give him some credit for that. And um, I dare a helicopter to fly as slow as this thing can. It's pretty difficult. All right, let's go see if we can find any wild horses today. I'm bringing us down again. My throttle's at about half. I'm not at zero throttle because if you do that, your engine will cut out. So watch out for that. Now, the interesting thing with this aircraft that I'll throw out as we're kind of wrapping up here is the fact, I like this engine, don't change, I love that, is you'll notice our fuel right now is at 92%. Well, we've used 8% of our fuel already. I mean, our total flight time is about 15 minutes in case uh, you keep the score there, which uh, suggests that you're not going to get very far. I think the maximum range of this aircraft was something like 250 kilometers. It works out to be about 100 miles, which <laughs> that's not much. Of course, if you wanted to travel 100 miles doing 44 knots, I think you'd realize that your total flight time would be in the hour range versus the minute range, which you're probably more comfortable with. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this thing down for a landing. All right, back the power back just a tiny bit. I'm going to go ahead and nudge the nose down. Everything's looking pretty good right now. Again, just a little bit of left foot. As this thing starts to slow down, you're going to feel that, again, that yaw just coming out from underneath you just a little bit. Be quick with the feet, but remember, anything you do to put the control or the um, aircraft out of coordination is going to encourage it to depart on you. And again, we don't have the horsepower to fly out of a departure stall or anything like that. Not that we should have had that problem. Okay, so landing this thing is a process. Um, it's one of those things, I've landed many aircraft simulated and real over the years, and um, I don't think I've ever quite had so many times doing a face plan as I have with this one. We are a tail dragging aircraft, uh, so again, usually the three point landing is recommended. Uh, you can bounce it on the landing without worrying too much, but at the same time, is the one thing we don't want to do is catch that giant six foot propeller into the sand that we're dipping ourselves down to. I feel like our engine's getting a little slow here. I'm going to use right foot. Let's check our oil pressure gauge. Yep, I've got basically an oil pressure. Whoa! I look down for half a second, the thing's already starting to yaw. What you can't see is I'm actually uh, using quite a bit of a right twist around, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, in order to keep us going. So give yourself as much room as possible. Don't pull the throttle all the way to zero. This thing is basically a kite, so treat it that way. So it looks like I've got a bit of an uphill. It looks like we're a little bit going uphill here as well. And what I just said. It looks like we have a bit of a slant is really what I meant to say there. And we're just going to keep on cruising down until we get nice and close to the ground. You don't want to pull that throttle back until you're guaranteed. If you know to need to do a bulk landing, uh, keep in mind this aircraft does not like to accelerate. So you definitely want to be nice and gentle and go ahead and get yourself just the right amount of left rudder. So right now my left rudder pedal is most of the way forward. I'm not going to show that in third person. Okay, let's go find a nice soft spot to put this thing down. Again, I got my throttle about at the 25% point. This is a very risky landing because it's a little uphill. I'm actually going to give myself a little bit of room here and try to find one of these sand dunes. It's going to be a little bit softer. Oop, I can feel the controls getting a little strong. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit more power here. I'm not happy with any of these landing spots. I'm actually just going to gently push the throttle forward. And we're going to go get us a little bit more power. We're just basically chilling in ground effect here until I find something that's actually soft enough for us to land on. It's kind of like when Buzz Aldrin and uh, Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Um, your preferred landing spot is not preferred. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and swing around this way. That looks pretty good. Again, be quick on the feet with this one, and remember your ailerons suck when you get slow. Okay, here we go. Nice and easy. Remember, the moment that engine stops, you can't use it again. So when you feel your controls get really heavy, 
that means your speed's just about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and gently put the front two tires. You're a lot higher off the ground than you think you are. All right, we are down. Gently pull the... Oh, oh, sorry, I'm fighting here. Pull the elevators back. Okie dokie. Ah, we are down. I'm going to gently pull the throttle back a little bit. Uh, stopping this engine is super easy. You're just going to pull this lever and just go... And the engine's just going to cut out on you. And that is it. So um, we're still rolling. Remember, we have no brakes. <laughs> and that's it. So um, again, this is uh, flying the Blario here. I'm going to put the wheel chocks in position. I'll go ahead and disengage my magneto to secure the aircraft. Go ahead and lock up the oil pressure valve. We'll go ahead and float underneath real quickly. And we'll go ahead and now shut off the fuel valve. And we have had ourselves a super successful flight. So this is the Blario 9. Again, this is the RIP edition. Uh, key things you got to remember is keep the speed up and you'll be very successful with it. This triangle is basically your best friend as far as reliability goes. Um, the runner is your best friend, but you got to be very, very quick with it if you're going to be successful. Enjoy.